to Budapest, the capital of Hungary, and especially in this historical and beautiful building, which is the most beautiful parliament building in the world. It's a pleasure for us to host you here and to open this conference. Dear Mr. President, MPs, our guests, first of all, I should speak some words about the most important challenges Europe must face nowadays. Of course, we have to ask whether the policies pursued by Europe are capable of serving our interests, improving our economy, and bringing the war to an end. It is now clear that they are not. Even if the IMF is forecasting that Russia's economic growth will overtake Germany, Europe's largest economy, both this year and in 2024 too. Economic sanctions have and will have serious consequences for Europe. While this war is the worst thing that could happen to Europe, it was not unprovoked. As long as the Ukrainian government continues to remove monuments, flags, texts, and they ban the use of minority languages in everyday life, including education and public administration, threaten and terrorize minority community leaders, as they did to Hungarians, I see no chance of supporting Ukraine in any international organization. Until the escalating economic crisis is relieved, we must focus our efforts on solving our own problems rather than helping the Ukrainian government. The best thing we can do for the people threatened by war is to make an end to the conflict immediately. Europe is now losing Russia, one of its most important export markets and one of its most reliable suppliers of cheap energy and raw materials, without which its competitiveness on the world market will be severely damaged. This certainly cannot be Europe's interest, and therefore an autonomous European position is needed that does not subordinate itself to the US interests. I also have to talk about the lessons of the COVID crisis, which have been adequately drawn by international public opinion. Because what really happened? It turned out that the EU leadership had corruptly obtained the experimental vaccines, which were forced on so many people. Those who did not want or did not get vaccinated suffered all kinds of disadvantages and the negative consequences are still being swept under the carpet. The debate should be about compensation. The economic damage to Europe caused by the closures has been staggering, while many of these measures have been pointless. My party, our homeland movement, cannot support any level of restriction of national sovereignty in this matter, and we stand up for the people's freedom of choice. And let me also say a few words about the situation of the mothers and the families, as I myself am the, the mother of four children, and I consider the issue of demography to be the most important in the 21st century for Europe and for my country, Hungary. I sincerely believe that we can only preserve our country if we focus on supporting the families living there. We have to face the fact that with such demographic indicators, public finances will simply become, become unsustainable in two or three decades. For me, it is unacceptable to replace children who should be born in Europe with migrants from other cultures. We must defend Hungary, we must defend Europe. Thank you for your attention. And now I ask our guests to listen to the main speakers of the conference. Our first speaker 
will be László Torockai, the leader of our homeland movement. He will be followed by Kostadin Kostadina from Bulgaria. The time limit is five minutes. Mr. Torockai, please uh, give your speech. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, I welcome you all to our conference. I would like to extend a special welcome to our guests, uh, our allies from all over Europe. I welcome Mr. Mikael Jansson, the Vice President of uh, Alternative for Sweden, Mr. Nicola Rimoldi, the party leader of uh, Massfall from Switzerland, Josef Nerushil, the local councillor of Prague from Freedom and Direct Democracy from Czech Republic. With you and with our most important uh, allies to the west and uh, east of Hungary, the delegations of the Dutch Forum for Democracy and the Bulgarian Revival, we want to straighten our alliance here today. With this conference in Budapest, we wanted not uh, only to repay the wonderful invitations to Sofia, Amsterdam, and uh, Stockholm, uh, but also to declare that the parties present here today must lead the creation of a new European alliance. Our parties had almost the same goals and uh, programs even before we had any contact. While I was starting to talk about the Great Reset in my YouTube videos, uh, Thierry Baudet, the leader of uh, Forum for Democracy, wrote a book, which uh, we have just translated into Hungarian and published in Hungary, which is a guiding light for us on the whole Great Reset and COVID stories. While in other videos on uh, YouTube, uh, I was talking about the real motivations behind the war in Ukraine, Mr. Kostadin Kostadinov, opened the eyes of millions of people, not only in Bulgaria, but in other countries as well, with the truths that only uh, he had the courage to speak about. The fact is that not only do our parties have similar programs, but our parties have almost identical histories. We have all been confronted with politicians who, out of cowardice and opportunism, have not had the courage to speak the truth and have betrayed their people and have in fact uh, served our global oppressors. The saddest thing is that uh, these politicians were in our own political communities. We are uh, bound together by the fact that it was us who did not uh, become traitors. We are the ones who refused to lie to our people. We are the ones who refuse to be politically correct. And we are the ones who were mocked and made fun of because they believed they had defeated us. But we proved them wrong. Not only have we survived and are now leading our communities, but we are growing stronger. And this strength can be given a huge boost if we continue to fight not alone, but together. Just as in our own countries we have not become traders, we have not given up our principles and we have not wanted to be politically correct, neither should we make the wrong compromises in European politics. Our duty is to create a new European policy and a new European alliance. One that is more brave and more outspoken uh, than it has ever been before. One that is um, accountable only to God and to the nation, not to some miserable marionette puppets like the European Commission or even the World Health Organization. Here in Budapest today, we have outlined our common goals in a singular, single declaration, which makes it clear to see what we are fighting for. These are historic times. The world is being transformed, a new world order is being created. All the processes that are harmful, harmful to European nations have accelerated. Millions of migrants are flooding the countries of Europe. Censorship of social media is becoming more and more violent and the control, the monitoring and surveillance of people is increasing. 
There are more and more extreme attempts to destroy families with LGBTQ and other harmful liberal propaganda and to create a completely values anti-traditional world where there are only faceless consumers. The servant of this dark process is the European Union and the army of this dark force of a circle of financiers who have never been democratically elected is currently the NATO. However, there is also a chance that the current unipolar world order could be replaced by a multipolar world order that is better than the present one. Now is the time to be very vigilant. We want real and radical changes. We do not want to make slight changes to the current system, but still keep serving it. So it's time for us to act. We must be very selective with our European allies, because in these historic times, we have a huge historic responsibility. Here is an opportunity to finally stop the destruction of the Europe of nations. But if we choose the wrong allies, our nations could fall. We can only choose allies who grasp the essence, the roots of this global dark force, who are brave and honest, who are true comrades, who are not afraid and who cannot be bribed either. We have now invited such parties and such politicians from different parts of Europe, the ones who are showing the way. We are capable of saving Europe from destruction. Future generations will be grateful to us if we create this historic alliance now. Let's go and do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next speaker is Kostadin Kostadinov, the party leader of Revival Movement from Bulgaria. He will be, he will be followed by Thierry Baudet from the Netherlands. Uh, Mr. Kostadinov will speak on his mother tongue. I, I ask uh, uh, Tomas to translate it to English. Thank you. The floor is yours. Благодаря. Първо искам да благодаря за поканата, за да бъда на тази конференция днес заедно с вас на господин Ласко Торотска и Михазанка. First of all, I would like to thank you and to Mr. Ласко Торотска for the invitation and I'm really grateful to that I can be here in this conference. Радвам се, защото нас ни свързват не само общите проблеми, които в момента имаме като европейски държави, като европейски народи, но и една хилядолетна обща история. And it's also very important that we are related not only about, uh, by our common problems, but also by our common history, more than a thousand years. Ние имаме общи исторически връзки, които са на повече от хиляда години. Бяхме съюзници в много войни в изминалото столетие. Бяхме съюзници в по-голямата част от миналия век. Съюзници сме и в момента в НАТО и в Европейския съюз. We have a common history, more than a thousand years. Uh, we were allies much more of uh, this uh, time, and uh, we have to uh, fight uh, together for a better Europe nowadays as well. В момента нашият европейски континент и нашата европейска цивилизация са под заплаха. At the moment, our European uh, culture and uh, all the European uh, civilization is uh, Uh, under, uh, is in the danger. Заплахата е демографска, културна, религиозна, цивилизационна. This danger is uh, demographic, cultural and uh, civil, uh, related to the civilization also. Тъй като общите проблеми, които ние имаме, заплашват да унищожат нашия общ европейски дом, нашите действия за тяхното преодоляване също трябва да бъдат общи. Our enemies are striving to annihilate our or uh, our common European uh, homeland. До година има европейски избори и ние трябва да направим така, че да успеем да се превърнем в общо европейски фактор. Next year we will have uh, European elections and we will have to strive to get back our Europe. 
Гласът на хората, които искат Европа да бъде за европейците, трябва да бъде чут в Брюксел и във всяка една европейска държава. The sound of the Europeans has to be heard also in Brussels and all, uh, in all of Europe. Европейският съюз в този си вид се превръща в заплаха за европейската цивилизация. It's also very important the European Union as we know it, it's a danger for the European civilization. Или трябва да го реформираме, или той ще унищожи Европа такава каквато е познаваме през последните 2000 години. Or we will have to uh, reform it or it will annihilate the European civilization as we know it from 2000 years. За това ние от възраждане в България подкрепяме инициативата за тази обща декларация. Because of this uh, we on behalf of the Bulgarian revival movement fully support the declaration and the aims of this conference. Защото тя поставя началото на един обединителен процес. Because it uh, takes down the fundamentals of a new process of uh, European unity. Желая успех на Михазанг в борбата за запазване на Унгария като водеща сила в Европа. I wish success to the Hungarian our movement, our movement, movement uh, in the fight for the Europe and for the Hungarian interests. Защото колкото по-силна е Унгария, толкова по-силна е Европа. Because uh, as, uh, as strong Hungary is, then uh, much more stronger will be Europe in the same. Същото нещо въжи за всяка една друга европейска държава. And the same is valid for all of the European countries. Бъдещето на Европа зависи само единствено от нас, европейците, които се гордеем, че сме европейци, не се срамуваме от своето историческо минало и се гордеем, че ще имаме велико бъдеще. The future of Europe depends only on us and who are proud of our European culture and we have to represent these values in the future as well. Още веднъж желая успех на Михазанг, да живее Унгария, да живее България. One more time. I uh, wish success to the Hungarian our movement, our homeland movement. Long live Hungary and long live Bulgaria. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And our next speaker is Thierry Bode, the party leader of Forum for Democracy from the Netherlands. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I cannot express my, enough my gratitude to Laszlo and, and his team and the people that have worked so hard to make this possible. It, it really is a dream come true for me to be here with people from different countries in Europe, different regions, different languages, who have experienced the same fights and have experienced the same backlash from the system, who have experienced the same necessity to fight for our common civilization and the, the people that found the courage to continue even though in the middle of the COVID period and then the, the early days of the war in Ukraine, it seemed as if we were the only ones. We've all experienced this sense of loneliness. We were, we were told by the media, we were, we were all told that we were the only ones that we were the crazy ones, that we were marginal, that we were absolutely on the outer fringes of acceptable opinion. And here we are, making a friendship, building an alliance. I think this is an, a, a crucial moment, and, and I think it's only the beginning, but it's, the, it's a crucial turning point in the history of Europe, in the political history of our continent. I hope in, in, in next year, in June, when the, the, the elections for the European Parliament will happen, I hope this alliance will translate into wonderful election results in all our respective nations. 
I think we can cooperate. I think we can exchange best practices in, in terms of campaigning, in terms of, of organizing rallies, in terms of exchanging facts and discoveries and, and, and asking questions once we are elected and, and really starting to work for the people that we feel so connected to that we feel a duty to represent and to protect against all the very, very dangerous plans that are being drawn up in the international circles where the globalists meet, where the big corporations and the ambitious politicians are making their deals. We're standing up to them. And today is the first the first meeting of, I hope, many to follow. And I think that if we join forces and if we really align each other on the same agenda, on the same points, and we stay loyal to each other and we, we continue to live by our friendship, I think there are no limits to what we can achieve. And I, I'm really grateful, Laszlo, for you, for having brought us together, Marco and John, the people from, from my party who have been working so hard with you and behind the scenes to make this happen. Thank you so much to all of you. And I'm looking forward with great enthusiasm to all the things we're going to do together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And our next speaker is Josef Nerushil from the Czech Republic. He is a local councillor of Prague from the Freedom and Direct Democracy. The floor is yours, Mr. Thank you very much, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to deliver here many greetings from SPD party that stands for direct and uh, freedom and direct democracy, and especially from our party leader, Tomio Okamura, that unfortunately cannot uh, participate in today's conference, as uh, after tomorrow we are starting a new parliament session, and he needs to uh, prepare our party position, because what we are challenging now in the Czech Republic is uh, the coalition is trying to rush to put forward as many uh, liberal proposals as possible and we need to find effective strategy how to fight it. My name is uh, Josef Nerušil. I'm director of uh, Political Institute of uh, SPD and uh, I'm very happy I can be here. And I would like to give you three short uh, comments on uh, first on our party program, second on our political situation in the Czech Republic, and third uh, on our political situation in the city hall, where we are very happy that uh, we could uh, experience breakthrough. And uh, we are now member of the city hall in the most liberal city in the Czech Republic. SPD was founded in 2015 as a reaction uh, by uh, Tomio Okamura, our leader, to fragmentation of uh, our national and pro-national uh, parties. We have three core uh, points of our program. First is direct democracy. We believe that citizens should be able to call for referendum, and we are probably the last country in Europe where uh, citizens uh, doesn't have this right. Our second point is strictly no to uncontrolled or illegal, however you want to call it, migration. And third uh, core uh, is uh, our pronational uh, orientation. We don't believe in anything like uh, governance of Brussels, of NGOs, or of other activists. We believe that uh, we are sovereign nation and that we should uh, govern our country by ourselves. Just one short comment, how we see European Union. We don't believe that we are able to reform European Union. We believe that it's better, better to uh, pass through controlled dissolution of uh, the European Union, and then we should focus on cooperation between neighboring countries. That's for the Czech Republic is Slovakia, Poland, Hungary, Austria, and neighboring countries of Germany like Bavaria and uh, Saxon. 
in the Czech Republic, we are experiencing something that uh, some forces uh, tried to apply in Hungary as well. That means politics of blocks, that uh, five uh, so-called uh, democratic parties allied together one is a very leftist uh, pirate party, second one is a conservative Christian party, all against the uh, hegemon of our uh, political system, that's uh, Andrei Babiš. Andrei Babiš is a close ally of uh, Viktor Orban, however his uh, party is a typical catch-all party, so it means uh, they turn to left, to right, to liberal position or to conservative position, just according to the political uh, situation. For us, uh, SPD, this is our biggest distinguish from uh, ANO movement, that for us is strictly our program, there is strictly no compromise. We keep up to our uh, program and uh, we are not going to step uh, from, from it. So this liberal bloc, uh, what we especially complain about is their weak international politics, uh, especially uh, when uh, the Czech Republic was a presidential country of the European Union. Our uh, political leaders were proposing such uh, ideas that even uh, people like uh, Franz Timmermans from Netherlands uh, were a little bit, uh, like I would say, too uh, surprised how liberal position we are uh, encouraging and uh, also I would like to uh, give some uh, comment uh, on Prague situation because this is typical liberal city where up to 70% are voters of uh, liberal parties like these pirate parties, leftist parties, green parties, uh, etc. We tried uh, hard twice to succeed, never succeed, uh, this time we succeeded and uh, the recipe uh, was quite easy. We tried to fight fragmentation of national parties because uh, last elections we lost approximately one million, one million votes that uh, didn't pass, that uh, were votes for parties that didn't pass 5% uh, closure. And this is the reason why even though this liberal coalition has minority of votes, have, has uh, majority in uh, parliament. So for us, uh, this was a big uh, breakthrough, even though we had the opportunity to create a conservative coalition in our capital city, uh, but uh, everyone is so afraid of our party that uh, conservative party, conservative Christian party preferred to be, uh, to create alliance uh, with a pirate party that's typical agenda, liberal agenda, like Unutasia, uh, abortions, uh, Green Deal, uh, traffic uh, oppression, uh, censorship, uh, and so on. I think that uh, this is all experience that uh, we could share here uh, together because the situation in Europe is similar. But it was also similar that uh, the situation is uh, step by step uh, changing. And uh, I last week attended a conference of Youth uh, Party Freedom uh, for democracy from Netherlands. I was really excited uh, when I saw when I saw so many excited young people uh, fighting for conservative values and I think when they succeeded in Netherlands we can succeed also in the Czech Republic or whenever in Europe. So for me the call is let's uh, try to find uh, what connects us, let's try to find new alliances, let's try to be positive because our programs should be positive not negative and uh, I believe that the uh, future is ours. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your attentions and I'm looking forward for another discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our next speaker is Mikael Jansson, who is Vice Party Leader of Alternativa für Sweden. Mister, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, dear nationalists, Europe is un under a big threat. At the same time, we have the right criteria to build a resistance. And not only re a resistance, but a powerhouse in form of a strong network for true nationalists 
a strong party group. While the socialists and liberals work together with the aim to concentrate the real power in Brussels, we also need to cooperate. But our goal is the opposite. We want to keep the nation states alive and free. Brussels shall never be the capital in a one nation Europe. To form the best possible party group for the European Parliament is very important. My party, Alternative for Sweden, are not at the moment a member of the European Parliament. We think that we have a great chance to be a member in the next election due to the fact that we are the only party in Sweden who want Sweden to leave the European Union. We really hope that we can be a part of this group and be helpful to the common cause. Mass immigration to Europe is one of the biggest problems we have. The proportion of the immigration is in a scale that we can call it an ongoing catastrophe. Some of the European countries have more problems than others. Maybe in Sweden, we have the very biggest problems. Sweden used to be a very healthy and secure country, but in a couple of decades, everything changed. Uh, though the Swedish people never wanted mass immigration, the po political elite saw it through. Now it's normal in Sweden with shootings on the streets, and that is in the whole of the country. We do not help anyone with mass immigration. The developing countries is helping themselves much better than we can help. The BRICS organization are in a strong phase. Mass immigration was, from the very beginning, a bad plan. We must put an end to it. Europe is suffering from the war in Ukraine. We suffer from bad economic, uh, economical consequences. The people in Ukraine suffer even more. They are losing their lives. Most of all are Ukrainian soldiers losing their lives. Second most are the civilians in the eastern Ukraine losing theirs. Uh, it is bizarre, everything with this war. Russia didn't want the war. They tried to stop it in every moment. Washington, on the other side, they orchestrated the bloody Maidan revolution. The government in Washington and their related organization is often called the swamp. The swamp find, it, find this war useful and a cheap way to bleed Russia. This is very cynical and dangerous. It increases the risk for a direct war between the great powers and carries a risk for nuclear war. Many people in Sweden are misled by mass media and therefore do not understand the reasons for the war. Media in Sweden do not either explain why US, US backing of Al-Qaeda in Syria is bad. The American proxy wars are not in our interest, and are not, they are, that are not in the interest even for ordinary Americans. The only profiteers are the elite families of the swamp who make money out of it. We must put an end to it. Washington, Washington does not have to be bad. The hope for a better US foreign policy is Trump. I'm very happy that AfD is growing in Germany. Germany is very important for Europe. If the industry in Germany collapses, it's a disaster for us all. CDU and the Grünen are in responsibility for the negative development in Germany. It all began with Merkel. 
It looks like the world economy are going into recession now. And for Europe, it is a worse perspective. While we are dependent of USA, we are very vulnerable. With the war and the sanctions, we can see that USA uses Europe for its own interest. We must put an end to it. Germany are important for the European economy, but also for the cooperation between the nationalists in Europe. The progress of AfD is a big hope for us all. I mentioned a lot of problems that we need to put an end to. At the same time, it's important to understand that it's never too late. We can still save Europe. Our wonderful countries, our great history, and our successful science and enterprises. All that should continue. Europe is the best part of the world. Our hard work shall create a great future for our kids in the Europe of nations. Good luck to us all in the upcoming election to the European Parliament. Thank you. And our next speaker is Nicola Rimoldi from Switzerland, the party leader of MassFall. Mr. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. My brothers in arms, I am deeply honored to have been given the opportunity to speak here today in the Hungarian Parliament. It is an especially emotional occasion for me, being the grandchild of one of the brave patriots who in the year of the Lord 1956 took up arms in this very city to defend his beloved homeland. A special thanks to Mia Sank for inviting me. <clears throat> My friends, the hour is late. We are standing at the edge of extinction, a fact you must be keenly aware of because otherwise you would not be here. We are facing the annihilation of our nations, our values, our traditions, and our culture. We are facing the annihilation of the very essence of what it means to be human, of what it means to lead a dignified existence in safety and security. We constitute the last stand. And just as division makes us weaker, unity will make us stronger. That is why we need to build this alliance, not in a month, not in a week, not tomorrow, but now, here, today. At the dawn of the Battle of Moaj, Louis II famously said, God knows where we will eat lunch. Today, we might ask the same question, facing the uncertainty that lies ahead of us. And in order to face that uncertainty, an alliance of sovereign people from all over Europe is now needed more than ever. Decent people from Hungary, Switzerland, Sweden, Bulgaria, the Netherlands, and many other countries need to join hands to defend our identity against the globalists who wish to take away our rights and our serenity. Through international treaties like the WHO Pandemic Treaty, Migration Pact, and many more, they intend to steal our fundamental human right to independence and self-governance, piece by piece. Treaties which we from mass fall will fight tooth and nail once we are elected to the Swiss National Council in two months an endeavor we are pursuing while I'm speaking to you. Corona, migration, climate, wokeism, these agendas are but placeholders for one and the same thing, fear. Because fearful people are more likely to give up their rights and put up much less resistance. Fearful people are more willing to toss away the privileges for which their ancestors 
have fought, while hoping that the empty promises of self-declared experts will deliver salvation. A promise that has been made on many occasions in the past and always failed with disastrous consequences. My friends, the hour is late, but it is not too late to stop the globalists and the Great Reset, to preserve what we hold dear, not only for ourselves, but for generations yet to come, for our children and their children, to save our nations, our families, and the future of this great place called Europe. I say to you all, pay the highest price and endure every hardship. Give all you have and then give some more. Sacrifice everything and then sacrifice some more. And in the end, we will prevail because we must prevail. We will save Europe because we must save Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our next ag agenda is the signature of the Budapest Declaration for a Free Europe of Na Nations. So I ask Mr. John Laughland to read it standing before the national flags. The floor is yours. The Budapest Declaration for a Free Europe of Nations. We, the delegates of the Budapest Summit for a Europe of Nations, are fiercely committed to the fundamental European and human values of democracy, freedom, national and individual sovereignty. We declare, we are in favour of free cooperation between sovereign, independent nations in Europe for the greater good and opposed to supranational, bureaucratic and unaccountable global governance. We're in favor of independent national foreign policies and opposed to the policy of blocks. We're in favor of open economies based on fair exchange and deeply opposed to the industrially and criminally organized mass immigration which our societies cannot sustain and which are the inevitable result of the policy of a borderless Europe. Both legal and illegal immigration must be stopped. We're in favor of traditional family structures and of the protection of children and opposed to wokeism and LGBTQIA plus so-called values which are corrosive of national cohesion and common sense. We're in favor of rejecting the ideology formulated by the world organizations, financed by global corporations and financiers, which would de de deprive people of their freedom, and which, as if in some kind of dress rehearsal, has restricted the people's freedoms by using COVID as a pretext, while enriching the global corporations and financiers with incredible amounts of money. We're in favor of national democracy and opposed to the burgeoning institutions of global governments like the European Union, the World Health Organization and the United Nations with its so-called sustainable development goals, which are in reality nothing but a program for world government. We're in favor of private property, the bedrock of all liberties currently held in contempt by high tax and arbitrary expropriation, including from farmland, and opposed to today's finance-based post-industrial virtual economy controlled by unaccountable central banks. We're in favor of sound money and opposed to inflation, which robs the poor to pay the rich, and all forms of central control, especially central bank digital currencies. We're in favor of free speech and against the ever-growing pressure of censorship and taboos, 
which stifle debate, infantilize our intellects, and prevent us from getting to the truth. We want to strengthen our transnational cooperation in whatever form to promote these values. Signatories, Kostadin Kostadinov, Laszlo Torotskay, Thierry Baudet, Josef Nerushil, Mikhail Janssen, and Nicolas Rimoldi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I would kindly ask the leaders of the delegations to sign the document. Uh, our colleague will help you to change the papers. Thank you.